All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or evening or morning. It is April 27th, 2011, and I am very apologetic tonight because I have not made a tutorial in a long time. The reason for that is that I'm actually running a fresh install of Windows. I just put a solid state drive in my computer, and it's seriously taking me this long to get back up to full steam. So I'm there now. I think I've got everything I need installed, and we're going to try this again. So this is tutorial number five, and we're continuing upon our previous tutorials using the N Audio class library to do cool stuff with audio in the C Sharp programming language. Awesome! I didn't mess any of that up. Okay, this is N Audio. It's a class library for doing awesome audio stuff. So if you don't have it already, you can download it from nAudio.codeplex.com so we can progress with the tutorial. And as always, all of my tutorials are available on my website to view later with all the source code, the video explanations, everything you want. GIAWA.com is my website. You can just go to the tutorials section here. And as you can see, all of my tutorials are posted here. Once again, this is tutorial number five, and we're just going to take right off. Alright, I have Microsoft Visual Studio C Sharp 2010 loaded up, and I'm just going to create something called Tutorial 5. Right, this isn't quite set up to my liking, but we're just going to run with it. Let's add an audio, and you know what? Since this is a fresh install, I'm going to download a copy of an audio right now. Oh, let's just open it right up with WinRAR. There we go. Oh, look at that. It's even just sitting right there. Let's cancel that. I'm just going to put it on my desktop because I am lazy today. And let's add that reference. I'm just going to browse to my desktop. Get an audio.dll, and now we're ready to go. So we're going to take the first step to actually creating some sort of effect stream somewhere where we can get access to the PCM uncompressed, the PCM audio data there, and we can do fancy things too. We can do things like echo, like reverb, some great effects that we're going to listen to. We're going to get the feedback from the computer. It's going to be awesome. So this is our first step to doing that. And in our first step, what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, basic effect stream class that basically exposes that uncompressed PCM data. And we're going to do that by reading a WAV file. And you know what? Just thinking about it, I didn't prepare for this lesson at all. I don't even have a WAV file queued up, but we're going to find one anyways. It's going to be great. All right, I need to go and other windows, put my properties there. This is much better. You can see how, how prepared I am. I'm so sorry. I might just do this over again. You might never see this video. All right, we're just going to open a WAV file here. Perfect, okay. Now, for the first time ever here, I'm actually going to create a new source file in my tutorial. We're gonna create a new item here, and I'm gonna call this an effect stream. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm going to clean up my screen clutter bit here by just removing myself from the stream. There, now you don't have to look at me, perfect. All right, so we've got this effect stream, and you know what? This is going to be using the nAudio.wave namespace, and to make it so that this effect stream can be played by an audio, we're going to inherit that wave wave stream class. Awesome. Now remember, if we try to compile this, we're going to get a bunch of errors because we're not implementing these abstract methods. So let's see what we're going to do here. This effect stream is going to have to have another wave stream feeding in information, and then all the job that this, uh, the only job this effect stream has is to expose that uncompressed PCM data. So we need some sort of source stream here, and so I'm just going to create a wave stream, and I'll just call it source stream. I think that's bad because I think an audio calls it a base stream, but we're just going to run with source stream. All right. We're going to have a very basic constructor for this guy. It's going to take a wave stream. Uh, sure, I'll just call this stream. And it's going to set the source stream to that stream. That's a pretty easy way to start out. And now we're just going to start to put these methods in. Really, all they're going to do is they're going to pass like whatever this method does. It's going to 
can't explain myself properly. We're just going to call the source streams version of these methods. So you'll you'll get it as soon as I start to type it out. Here we go. We're going to go public override because we're going to override something, and we're going to uh, do this length. So in this get, we're actually just going to return the uh, source stream dot length. Ah, uh, see, yes, everyone's following me now. Now that I'm not talking. All right, so the position, exact same thing. We're going to return the source stream position. And here, we'll set the source stream's position to the value that's passed. What else do we have to do? All right, we got to get the wave format. And we'll just return the source stream's wave format for that. And last but not least, we're going to uh, get this read method. There it is. And what we're going to do here is we'll just return source stream dot read buffer offset count. Awesome. Now let's just make sure that this all works properly. We're just going to make sure that our effect stream can properly pass the source streams data to whatever is requiring uh, that data. So in this case, it's going to be some sort of direct sound out. So let's just try this out. We're going to direct sound out. I'm going to just auto hide that. There we go. Awesome. Direct. <laughs> there we go. Direct sound out. I'm totally not using an audio wave here. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Need to remember to use that. Direct sound out. Uh, output. And we're going to have some sort of block line reduction stream. All right, perfect. We'll have an open file dialog. And just like before, we'll set a filter on it. There we go. We're going to open up a WAV file, and then just like in tutorial number one, we'll get this. Uh, let's see, how are we going to do this? We do WAV channel 32. We're going to use a WAV file reader. We're just going to use that file name. Now, here's where we're going to put our effect stream. We're going to put it between the WAV channel 32 and the block line reduction stream. So let's try this out. We're going to have an effect stream. And it's going to take this wave channel 32, which is a wave stream in its constructor. Then we're going to create our block line reduction stream, which is going to take our effect stream as its source stream. Yeah, yeah it is called source stream. Fantastic. Finally, we'll create our direct sound output, give it a little bit of a buffer, initialize it with our block line reduction stream, and we're going to play. And just to save some time, I'm just going to run this immediately, and I'm going to dash over to my computer here, and I'm going to super quick find a WAV file. It's probably going to be some old WAV file that I've used in a previous tutorial, but that will be okay. You know what? I'll just grab all my tutorial stuff. There it is. All right. Open WAV. It's sitting on my desktop. Ah, we can play some music, I think. All right, we're going to give this a try. All right, pardon that uh, little feedback I got there. That's a problem with XSplit, which is the uh, program I'm using to capture my screen. So that's pretty cool. We can see the effect stream is passing data. And just to sort of visualize it, let's go and make this a console application super quick. And what I'm going to do, and sorry if I did that a bit too quick, uh, under your project properties, you can go and make this a console application as opposed to a Windows application. And what that does is that just opens up a console in the background. So you'll see that it's got this console now sitting back here. So I can put a bit of debugging information back there. So just to prove that our effect stream is being used, what I'll just do is I'll write something to the console. And I'll write that direct sound out requested a certain number of bytes, where the certain number of bytes is count. So we'll just run this and make sure that it's all working. And yeah, we're just, we'll go with it. Here we go. So tutorial number three dot wave.
so that's pretty cool hopefully you didn't get any feedback that time I turned my speakers down but you can see that this method is obviously being called our effect stream is now sitting between the source stream and the block line reduction stream and you can imagine direct sound out is requesting information from the block line reduction stream which then requests information from our effect stream which in turn requests information from our wave file itself so what we'll do in the next tutorial is we'll actually take this data, this buffer, and we're going to convert it to some sort of format that we can use, probably a type of integer or floating point number, and then we'll do something like an echo effect, and uh, we'll, we'll work towards something awesome from there. So I hope you uh, learned some cool stuff. You can see how we've accessed the data from that source stream. It's pretty basic stuff, but it's going to lead to some pretty exciting code in the future. So stay tuned for tutorial number six, and as I said earlier, all these tutorials are available on my website with the source code, with everything you need to get going. So that's once again www.giawa.com. I hope you have an excellent evening and have fun coding.